So now we are on Beowulf part 37, The Fatal Struggle, Beowulf's Last Moments. Then I heard that at need of the king of the people, the upstanding earlman exhibited prowess, vigor, and courage as suited his nature. So Wiglaf is now defending Beowulf. He, he his head did not guard, but the high-minded liegeman's hand was consumed when he succored his kinsmen. So he struck the strife-bringing strange comer lower, Earl Thane in armor, that in went the weapon, gleaming and plated, that gan then the fire later to lessen. The liege lord himself then reta retained his consciousness, brandished his war knife, battle sharp, bitter, that he bear on his armor. So Beowulf is now drawing his knife. The wilder lord cut the worm in the middle. They had felled the enemy. Life drove out then, perceant prowess. The pair had destroyed him, land chiefs related, so a liegeman should prove him a thane when needed. To the prince, twas the last of his era of conquest by his own great achievements, the, la the latest of world deeds. The wound then began, which the earth-dwelling dragon erstwhile had wrought him to burn and to swell. He soon then discovered that bittersweet bale woe in his bosom was raging, poison within. The eighthling advanced then, that along by the wall, he, prudent of spirit, might sit on a settle. He saw the giant work, how arches of stone strengthened with pillars, the earth hall eternal inward supported. Then the long-worthy liegeman laved with his hand the far-famous chieftain, gory from sword edge, refreshing the face of his friend lord and ruler. Sated with battle, unbinding his helmet, Beowulf answered, of his injury spake he, his wound that was fatal. He was fully aware he had lived his allotted life days, enjoying the pleasures of earth. Then past was entirely his measure of days, death very near. My son, I would give now my battle equipments, had any of heirs been after me granted along of my body. This people I governed, fifty of winters, no king among my neighbors, who's regretting he never had a son, dared to encounter me with comrades in battle, try me with terror. The time to me ordered I bided at home, mine own kept fitly, sought me no snares, swore me not many oaths and injustice, joy all over this I'm able to have, though ill with my death wounds. Hence the ruler of earthmen need not charge me with the killing of kinsmen, when cometh my life out forth from my body. Fare thou with haste now to behold the hoard neath the hoar grayish stone, well-loved Wiglaf. Now the worm is a-lying, sore woundeth sleepeth, deceased of his treasure. Go thou in haste, that treasures of old I, gold wealth may gaze on. Together, see lying, the other bright jewels, be easier able, having the heap of hoard gems to yield my life and the land folk whom I have long governed. So he wants Wiglaf to bring him the hoard so that his dying eyes might at least see all the gems that the dragon had. Now we are on uh, part uh, 38. Wiglaf plunders the dragon's den and Beowulf's death. Then I, then heard I that Wis stands son very quickly, these words being undered, heeded his liege lord, wounded and war sick, went in his armor, his well-woven ring nail, neath the roof of the barrow. Then the trusty retainer treasure gems many victorious saw. When the seat he came near to, gold treasure sparkling spread on the bottom, wonder on the wall, and the worm creature's cavern, the ancient dawn flyers, vessels standing, cups of the ancients of cleansers bereaved, robbed of their ornaments. There were helmets in numbers, old and rust-eaten, arm bracelets many, artfully woven. Wealth can easily gold on the sea bottom turn into vanity. Each one of the earthmen arm him who pleaseth. And he saw there lying in all gold banner, high o'er the hoard of hand wonders greatest, linked with lacelets. A light from it sparkled that the floor of the cavern he, cavern he was able to look on to examine the jewels. Sight of the dragon not any was offered, but edge off carried him. Then I heard that the hero the hoard treasure plundered, the giant work ancient re 
reaved in the cavern, bare on his bosom the beakers and platters, as himself would have fain it, and took off then the standard, the brightest of beacons. The bill had erst injured, its edge was of iron, the old ruler's weapon, him who long had watched a ward of the jewels, who fire terror carried hot for the treasure, rolling in battle, in middlemost darkness, till murdered he perished. The messenger hastened, not loth to return, hurried by jewels. Curiosity urged him if, excellent mooded, alive, he should find the lord of the weeders, mortally wounded, at the place where he left him. Mid the jewels he found then the famous old chieftain, his liege lord beloved, at his life's end gory. He thereupon gan to lave him with water, to the point of his word pierced his breast hoard. Beowulf spanked, the gold gems he noticed, the old one in sorrow. For the jewels I look on, thanks do I utter for all to the ruler, wielder of worship, with words of devotion the Lord everlasting, that he let me such treasures gain for my people ere death overtook me. Since I bartered the aged life to me granted for treasure of jewels, attend ye henceforward the wants of the war thanes. So he's really happy to see the jewels. He desires to be held in memory of people. No longer. The battle famed bid ye to build then a grave hill, bright when I'm burned, at the brim's current's limit, as memory marked the men that I have governed. Aloft it shall tower on Wales' nest uprising, that earls of the ocean hereafter may call it Beowulf's barrow. Those who barks ever dashing from a distance shall drive o'er the darkness of the waters. The bold mooted troop lord took from his neck then the ring that was golden, gave to his liegeman the youthful war hero, his gold flashing helmet, his collar and war mail, and bade him well to enjoy them. Thou art latest left of the line of our kindred, of wag munding people, weird hath oft carried all of my kinsmen to the crater's glory, earls in their vigor, I shall after them fare. Twas the aged lead lord's last spoken word in his musings of spirit, ere he mounted the fire, the battle waves burning, from his bosom departed his soul to seek sainted one's glory. And now we are on part um, 39, there we go. <laughs> uh, the dead foes, wig laughs, bitter taunts. It had woefully chanced ye, the youthful retainer, to behold on earth the most ardent beloved at his life day's limit, lying there helpless. The slayer too lay there, of all life bereaved, horrible earth drake, harassed with sorrow. The round twisted monster was permitted no longer to govern the ring hordes, but edges of war swords mightily seized him, battle sharp, sturdy, leavings of hammers, that still from his wounds the flyer from farland fell to the earth, hard by his hoard house, hopped he at midnight, not o'er through the air, nor exulting in jewels, suffered them to see him, but he sank then to earthward, through the hero chief's handwork. I heard it sure throve then, but few in the land of liegemen of valor, though every of every achievement bold, he had proved him, to run gainst the breath of the venomous scather, or the hall of the treasure to trouble with hand blows, if he watching had found the ward of the hoard hall on the barrows abiding. Beowulf's part of the treasure of jewels was paid for with death. Each of the twain had attended to the end of life so unlasting. Not long was the time till the tardy at battle returned from the thicket, the timid truce breakers, ten all together, who durst not before play with lances in the prince of the people's pressing emergency, but blushing with shame, with shields they betook them, with arms and armor where the old one was lying. So they're all really ashamed of their desertion. They gaze upon Wiglaf. He was sitting, exhausted, foot-going fighter, not far from the shoulders of the lord of the people, who would rouse him with water. No wit did it help him, though he hoped for it cleanly. He was able on earth not all in the leader, life to retain, and no wise to alter the will of the wielder. The world ruler's power would govern the actions of each one of heroes. And yet, he is doing from the young one forthwith then could grim worded greeting be got for him quickly, whose courage had failed him. Wiglaf discovered then, Wehostan, his son, sad mooded hero, looked on the hated. So he's taunting them. 
He who soothness will utter can say that the liege lord who gave you the jewels, the ornament armor wherein ye are standing, when on ale bench often he afforded to Hallman, Helmet, and Bernie, the prince, prince to his liegemen, as best upon earth he was able to find him, that he wildly wasted his war gear undoubtedly when battle or took him. The troop king no need has to glory in com comrades yet. God permitted him, victory wheeled her, with weapon unaided himself to avenge, when vigor was needed. I, life protection, but little was able to give him in battle, and I gan nothing, non with, and I gan notwithstanding, helping my kinsmen, my strength overtaxing. He waxed the weaker, when with weapon I smote on my mortal opponent, the fire less strongly flamed from his bosom. Too few of protectors came round the king at the critical moment. Now must ornament taking and weapon bestowing, home joyance all, cease for your kindred, food for the people. Each of your warriors must needs be bereaved of rights that he holdeth in land possessions, when far away nobles shall learn of your leaving your lord so basely the dastardly deed. Death is more pleasant to every earlman than infamous life is. So he's saying the Lord uh, Beowulf uh, wasted his armor on them. Um, they got along without him. If he had had help from those, he probably could have saved his liege lord. So he probably could have saved Beowulf if the other ones hadn't abandoned him. And essentially, what is life without honor? All right, a little bit more to go and we're done.